Bibles close by, we'll have different scriptures we're going to be looking at this morning. Enjoyed each song this morning. It was so, so good. <clears throat> if the Lord will lead us this morning, I'll try not to be very long. But I want to talk about led by the Spirit. We've been looking in the book of Ruth. We're still in chapter 1. We're going to be getting into barley into chapter 2 this morning. And we'll do that here in just a moment. But I wanted to read this Psalms. This Psalms goes so much along. In fact, this Psalms is a message in itself. If we did nothing else but read this message this morning, what a blessing it would be. What a blessing it would be this morning. Thankful for uh, Brother Brandon and what a message he brought Wednesday. Worldly separation. It is time for the church to stand up and be separate. Because destruction's coming. I'm telling you, judgment is coming upon the face of the earth. And it's time for the church to stand up and be the church. Amen. I'm thankful for the decision that the Supreme Courts have made in the last couple weeks. Standing up and let us pray as citizens of North Carolina that our leaders will have backbone to stand up. Amen. 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 I mean that sincerely. It is time for us to turn back to God's word. Psalm 43 and verse 8. Cause me, and I, I want you to listen to these words. This ought to be underlined in your Bible. Cause me to hear thy love and kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Teach me to do thy will. For thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Then flip over with me, back over with me to the book of Ruth. The book of Ruth where we've been for a few weeks. The book of Ruth, chapter 1 and verse 19. This book is so powerful. This book is so full of so many wonderful, wonderful things of God. Ruth, chapter 1 and verse 19. So they too went until they came to Bethlehem, and it came to pass when they were come to Bethlehem that all the city was moved about them, and they say, is this Naomi? Now, for those of you who know the book of Ruth, I'm just going to repeat real quickly for those that maybe don't know and what we've been studying. Naomi and Amimelech left the house of bread, Bethlehem, went into the land of Moab where they didn't pray and ask God, didn't seek God's face what they should do, tried to save their own selves, and you can't save your own self or make your own way. And while there, both sons died, their Daughter-in-laws are still with them. Her husband dies. And now the Spirit of God begins to draw her back. Finally, she is beginning to hear the Spirit of God and listening to what God is saying. And he has drawn her back and her two daughter-in-laws with her. And then last Sunday we talked about how that Ruth really had a possession. She really wanted to go. She wanted Naomi's God to be her God. Oh, for Christ and acted as though she did, but she didn't really have that possession. Uh, and so thankful that Ruth did. And so she stayed with her mother-in-law. Now they're both coming to Bethlehem, the house of bread, coming back. So that's where we're at this morning. So in verse 19, I just read to you, the whole city was moved about them, and they said, Is this Naomi? Verse 20. And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty have dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord had brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord have testified against me, and the Almighty have afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabite, and her daughter-in-law with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem, and I want you to notice this, this is a very important word right here, they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. And I'll tell you why that's important. Let's go on down into chapter 2. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Abimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth 
the Moabites said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and gleam ears of corn after him, in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went, she came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And I want you to notice this. You ought to mark this in your Bible. And her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boabs, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. Father, touch your word this morning. Give me the words to say. Lord, just exactly what we need to hear. Let your word speak through us, Lord. You know what each person, individual that's listening now, those who will later listen through the different ministries of the church, I pray, God, that your word will go forth and it will accomplish. It will bring to pass what you send it forth to do. And myself, God, I can't say nor do anything, but if the Holy Ghost of God would just speak through me this morning, Lord, your word to your people, draw us back unto you as never before, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. <clears throat> As I was reading to you in the book of Psalms a while ago, he said, calls me. I, I like that, calls me. Don't just love me, Lord. Don't just speak love and kind, but calls me to hear it. Aren't you thankful that God will call us, calls us to hear his Loving kindness. He makes ways so that our eyes can be opened. Do you realize our eyes are shut a lot of times to God's blessings? We go around and we're like Ruth. We say the Almighty's hand is against me. The Almighty's hand was with her. He was leading her back home. He was bringing her back to the place of bread. And yet she's sitting there. She comes home. Instead of rejoicing in God, instead of thanking God, I'm home again. Instead of praising God that the folks didn't remember her and were glad to see her, she allows that bitterness to set in. I'm going to tell you, in the church, bitterness will kill you. Bitterness will destroy you. In the church, bitterness will bring doubt. It will bring unbelief. It, it, it'll work a work in your life that will destroy you. We need to see the blessings of God. Instead of seeing the glass half full, we need to see our half empty. We need to see it half full. We need to realize that God is moving in ways that we cannot see and that we cannot understand. You've got shoes on your feet this morning. If you wanted shoes, somebody done took them all out. It's all right if you have. But you've got shoes on your feet. You left shoes in your closet. You left clothes in your closet. You left food in your refrigerator. We are a blessed, blessed people. Oh, Brother Doug, you know how, how, guy, how high gas is? Yes, I do. I buy it just like you do. But I was able to get here this morning. I got enough to get me home this morning. Ain't God good? I got enough to get me through next week. God has been so good to me. So we can sit around and we can grumble, we can complain, we can gripe, we can let bitterness get in our heart and destroy us. And Naomi had allowed bitterness to set in. But, but the psalmist says, calls me, make me to hear thy loving kindness. Calls me to know thy way. In other words, lead me in that path, direct me. Make me know your way. The psalmist said, In thee do I trust. I lift up my soul. Verse 9 that I read you in that psalm, he said, I flee unto thee, hide me. Do you ever feel like in this world, and maybe you are so much more holy and so much more righteous than I am, but do you ever feel like just finding a hiding place somewhere else? I'm, I'm thankful for a job. You've heard me complain and grumble about it, but I'm thankful for it. I really am. But there's times I get tired of hearing Doug line one. I'm thankful people's calling because if people ain't calling, we ain't eating, are we, Dave? But there's times in this life when it seems like trial after trial, circumstance after circumstance, and we just want to hide away. Our problem is we hide in the wrong places. I'll never forget when I was young. I couldn't get up under a bed now if I had to. They don't make them that tall. I can remember hiding. I used to love to hide. And I, I can remember Mama just a hollering all over the place trying to find me. And my stinking little self up there under the headboard just happy where I was at. Hid away. We hide in the wrong place. We need to hide in God. We need to hide in His Spirit. 
We need to run to Him when it seems like the waters will overflow us and it seems like that troubles will overtake us and it seems like that all the things that that are coming upon us are just too much for us. Then we need to hide away in Him. We need to get on that back porch or we need to get away in that closet or somewhere along with God, wherever it might be, maybe out in the woods, and there commune with our God and our Savior and say, God, hide me in Your loving kindness and hide me in your grace. Teach me. Amen. I like what the psalmist said, teach me. Now I just preach right here in this psalm, but I've got to go on this morning. But I want to ask you a question. I've told you many times, the best sermons are questions. The psalmist says, teach me. But are you teachable? Are you teachable? Have you ever tried to, somebody come to you, you know how to do something, there's not a whole lot I know how to do with my hands. I'm not that great with them. I've taught Mary Jane what little bit I know, and now she'll tell me, you want me to do that because I'm fumbling around trying to get the screw in or I'm trying to work with that tool. She said, you want me to do that? And I said, yeah, well, just go ahead. (laughs) But have you ever tried to show somebody how to do something and they tell you more about it? Amen. Come on. And they try to, you know, well, well, and sometimes I'm unteachable. Sometimes that computer, you hear me talk about it. And I'll ask for Crystal or Stephanie one to show me something. And, and I'll start as they start to show me. And they just turn around and shut. You know, they just stop. And I've learned to just shut up. I've learned to listen. The Lord is trying to get us in this last day to be still and hear Him. We think we know the best. We think we know all about it, but children, we don't know anything. Without Him, we are nothing. But He knows all. Are you teachable? Now, the Lord, I I want you to hear this. Brother Jimmy Swaggart says this. I read in his book, and it was just so powerful. I want you to read this. If you want to write it down, you can. I'll, I'll, I'll get it to you so you can write it down. It says, when the, Lord, when the Lord plans for us, beautiful things result. When God plans, His plans are perfect for us. He wants, He desires to bless us more than we desire to be blessed. His plans, when the Lord plans for us, beautiful things result. Now listen, when we plan for ourselves, there are no positive results. Oh, it's got quiet now, ain't it? When we plan for ourselves, there are no positive results. Whose plan are you following right now? Whose plan are you working after? If it is not Jesus Christ's plan and working in your life, it is the wrong plan. Now Naomi and Ruth have set out on a journey. They're headed to Bethlehem. It is about a 70 to 80 mile journey, which would be nothing in this day and time. But in their day and time with two ladies, it was probably somewhere around a week. And as they come into the city of Bethlehem, the whole city is moved about them. They have not forgotten Naomi. Don't you know she had bound to being such a blessing in that community? They were so thrilled to see her coming back. They were so happy to see Naomi. They were welcoming her back into Bethlehem, the city of bread. And now we find here as she comes about and the whole city was moved about her, she says, call me Myra, for the Almighty have dealt very bitterly with me. I spoke very quickly on that last week, and I'll just very quickly mention it again this morning. The things that God was working in her life, she did not realize God was going to get in the arrangements. God was going to get in the circumstance, and He was going to turn it out for good. We'll talk about that more here in just a moment. But she had allowed bitterness to set in. She said, I went out full, and the Lord had brought me home empty. Did you hear what she was saying? The Lord had brought me home. But instead of looking at the good thing about being home back in the house of bread, she says, I'm empty. 
You know why she was empty? Because she wanted to be that way. She allowed herself to be that way. You know why you're sitting there this morning and your spirit is empty and your soul is empty? It's because you've not reached out to God. Because you've not called upon Him. He says, draw near unto me and I will draw nigh unto you. You have as much of the Spirit of God in your life and working in your life as you desire. She was bitter. She went out full. She's blaming everything on God. Boy, it's easy to blame everything on God, ain't it? But what we don't realize is that God gets in the circumstances, in the situations, and He works it out for good. She was blinded to God's work, and as many people are today. A fellow came in, and I'm always happy to see him. He always lifts my spirit. He came in this week. John, he came in and talked to me for just a moment. He said, I'm going to tell you how good God's been. A lot of people would have never seen God in this. He began to explain to me about engines. I don't know a thing about a car engine. Anymore, if you open that hood, it scares me to look at all those things. You know, you can't even find an oil stick anymore in a car. But he began to explain to me there was some little part in his car that was causing a problem. And he said, Doug, if that little little thing would have went down into the engine." It would have destroyed the engine. For all possibility, it should have. It had broke off. It should have went into the engine. But he said, God. How many of us would have seen God in that? I believe with all my heart. I about shouted when he said it. Got the Holy Ghost goosebumps. You see, that's my God. If we would just look for God instead of look for the bitterness, instead of look for the awful, if we would look and see the hand of Almighty God day by day and moment by moment, how He blesses His people, but she is blinded to the workings of God. I want you to flip quickly with me to the book of Romans chapter 8. Now we're going to come back to Romans chapter 8 in just a moment, but I want to look at a couple other verses. Romans chapter 8. This is one of my favorite chapters in the Word of God. Romans chapter 8. In verse 26, you know these verses very well. Listen, Romans 8 and 26. Likewise, the Spirit. Now I'm going to tell you, we believe in the Holy Ghost around here. Amen? Thank God for the Holy Ghost that still works, the Holy Spirit that still works in this last day. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. There are times when I go to God and I don't know how to pray. I've been there. You might not have ever been there, but I've been there. And the good Holy Ghost come down and take over, hallelujah, and pray just what I have need of. Get in touch with God. What a mighty God we serve. Listen. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now listen to verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestine to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Joseph told his brethren that day, and I mentioned this a few Sundays ago, he told his brethren, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Is it good when bad things happen to me? No. My God sends good things. He is the Father of lights in whom there is no variance, and every good and perfect gift comes from God the Father above. He doesn't send me bitterness. Yeah, He chastised me. 
Yes, he gets a hold of me sometimes and takes me to the woodshed. Brother Mark, I'm thankful he does. That lets me know I'm his child. Glory be to God. That lets me know that he loves me enough to chastise me. But he doesn't send bitter and evil my way. Satan sends those things. But when he does, glory be to God. Know what God, and we know that all things, all things work together for good to them who love God. You see, God will get in the circumstances. When the devil sends that situation, when the devil sends that thing in your home or that thing that is coming against you, whatever it might be, my God, will get in the arrangements. He will get in the circumstances. He will, me and Mary Jane sings this song, turn it around. <clears throat> My God will get in that circumstance and that situation and He'll turn it around for the good of His people because He loves us and He is there always for us to lead us and to guide us and to direct us. Amen. He'll turn that thing that the devil means for evil, He'll turn it into good. He'll turn it into good just as he was doing in Naomi's life. Instead of bitterness, she should have been rejoicing in the house of David and of the house of bread to where she had come home to. They came, and I told you just a moment ago to mark this in the Word of God in verse 22. They came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. Well, Brother Doug, what's so significant about that? First of all, they came right when the bread was beginning to flow. The Spirit of God will bring you into the flow. Oh, my, 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 my. If you're spirit-filled, you know this exactly what I'm saying. The Spirit of God will bring you into the flow. The devil will have you out on the outskirts. He'll have you walking around over there in ankle-deep water. But the Spirit of God will draw you. Oh, hallelujah. He'll draw you out into swimming water. Glory be to God. His presence and His Spirit. But not only was this the beginning of a Harley, barley harvest, barley harvest always signified it was time of Passover. Why Passover? You see, this is God's timing. You see, Passover, representing Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, our, I'm about to shout. Jesus Christ, our kinsman redeemer. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world, Brother Gary, for my sins. Glory be to God. And they were just about to meet this their kinsman redeemer, Boaz. The Passover represented these things. The Word of God tells us, and I, I like the way the Holy Ghost says this. It brings attention in verse 3 of chapter 2. He says, Her hat was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz. I don't believe it was by uh, happen chance. I don't believe it was by just something, some odd thing happening. I believe the Spirit of God directed her right where she needed to go. Now let me tell you, church, if we will begin to put everything in God's hand and we'll begin to ask Him for favor, that ought not to be foreign to us. If you think we've ever needed the favor of God, let me tell you, as long as time stands and this world is going on in this world in this day and time, we are going to need the favor of God. Amen. I believe we're going to come to the place to realize that the psalmist David did. I've been young and now I'm old. And yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread? I don't believe it's time for the church to put its head down in the sand and say things are too bad and situations are getting too hard. I believe it's time for us to stand up and proclaim Jesus Christ and Him crucified as never before and spread the gospel of Christ around this world. And I believe His Spirit will lead us and guide us and direct us and His favor will be with us. I can see as she starts out and, and here's another thing I want you to notice. Ruth wasn't just going to sit home and mourn. She wasn't going to sit home and be bitter. She wanted the Spirit to lead her and she said, listen, there's, there, there, there's grain out there for us to gather. Let me go and let me go into the field and there let me Bring in some harvest. Naomi tells her to go, and I believe the Spirit of God read her right to the right field. 
right to the right place. God will lead you if you will allow Him to. Hmm. Boy, it gets quiet there, don't it? I, many times, are too hard-headed. I, many times, think I can do it on my own. I, many times, like I just talked about, get a plan together. But when I step out of the way, and I step back, when I turn loose and let God, when I say, God, I've messed it up enough, I've caused enough problems and enough situations and Spirit of God just take my life, lead me, guide me and direct me, guide my footsteps, lead me to the right field that I'm to glean in and direct my pathways. God will do that. It was not by chance. It is not by chance that God's hand is upon you. It's not by chance that God's hand has been drawing you. He drawed her to that place. Back in Romans chapter 8 and verse 11, and we're going to close here in just a moment. Romans 8 and 11. Well, glory be to God. See anybody in here feel the Holy Ghost of God in this house this morning? Praise you, Father. Romans 8 and 11. Glory to God. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead, dwell in you. Do you ever think about that verse? The very Spirit that raised Christ from that tomb now dwells in you, the believer. Why do we sit around and wring our hands? Why do we sit and try to plan and think? Why don't we just turn loose and let the Spirit of God daily lead us and direct us? And He will. Now listen. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, We are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the bodies, ye shall live. Listen to these words. For as many as are led. Oh, my, 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 my. Did you hear that this morning? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, children, you know, we get in situations, we get in circumstances, we come to places and it seems like the enemy hops right on us and he says, well, who, who do you think you are? Just what do you think? God, you think God's going to bring you out of this circumstance? God's going to bring you out of this situation? Let me tell you, I am a child of Almighty God. Not because of who I am. Not because of the family I was born into. But because of my kinsman redeemer. Oh hallelujah. That saved me and redeemed me. Brought me out of sin. Brought me out of Moab. Brought me into the house of bread. Set me up under his table. Made me his child. Brother David I didn't deserve it. Not worthy of it. But yet his grace. Oh hallelujah. Because of the faith that I put in Calvary. And it's cleansing blood has cleansed me and I'm a child of almighty God and when that devil comes against me there is a bloodline oh glory be to God there's a bloodline brother Larry that he cannot cross glory be to God I can look him in the face and I can say I'm a child of almighty God oh hallelujah oh yeah I know I stumbled yeah I know I faltered because he'll remind you about that but you can say even because only because of my faith in him 
Not because of my deeds, not because of my good works, but because I have put my total faith and trust in Him. I am a child of Almighty God. And you cannot destroy, you cannot tear down. Oh, we can say to live is gain, to live, to, to, to die is gain, and to live is Christ Jesus. This world is not my home. Glory to God. This world is not... I'm a pilgrim passing through because of my Lord and of my Savior. I'm going to hush. Led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Brother Beamer, many years ago, I don't know how many... Remember when Brother Beamer came years and years ago? I think he's down around the Charlotte area now. But he preached a sermon, turn loose and let God. We need to turn loose and let God, don't we, church? We need to turn loose and let God. When we do that, God will get in the arrangements. God will get in the circumstance. And he will turn it around. His grace is sufficient. We need to hold to God's unchanging hands. Let us stand this morning. Father, ooh, glory be to God. Father, I love you this morning. I praise you. Lord, I thank you for what you're, how you're working in our church, how you're moving in our lives. Many people's heads are hung down. They're in discouragement. God, let us lift up our head and realize that we're in the house of bread. Help us to lift our heads up and realize that we are children of God. Help us not to allow bitterness, defeat, things of this world to come in, separate us and get our eyes off of Jesus. Help us to set our focus upon you. And realize, God, that whatever's going on in our lives, God, that you're working and you're moving. That you're working and you're moving to turn it around for the good of your children. I ask, Lord, this morning, if there's one here, one that's listening this morning, that does not know you as Lord and Savior, oh, God, they're missing out on so much. Open their eyes, open their understanding this morning. Help them to see and help them to know their need right now. In Jesus' name, I want us to stand. There's one here this morning who does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. All glory. And His Spirit's calling you. Should Jesus Christ step out on the clouds of glory with a voice and the shout of the archangel and the trumpet of God's sound? And you're unprepared. This altar's open this morning. And all you got to do is reach out and touch Him. He's right close by. Believe in Christ and the finished work of the cross. Whether you're here this morning or listening, reach out. Believe by faith in the finished work of what He did there on the cross for your sins. Receive that forgiveness. Believe in that. In the Spirit of God. Glory be to God. Romans 8 and 2. The law of the Spirit will begin to work in your heart. And it began to work in your life. Anyone this morning don't know the Lord Jesus Christ? You got a need? You got a burden? You got a care? You desire prayer this morning. Altar's open. I'm not going to wait for just a moment. You need God to turn something around. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ain't God good? Has God been good to you, church? All glory to His name. Let's sing that song. Reach out and touch the Lord as He passes by. You will find He's not too busy to hear your hearts cry. He's passing by this moment your needs to supply. Reach out and touch the Lord as He... Can you do that right now? 
I'll sing it one more time. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. He will find he's not too busy to hear your heart cry. He's passing by this moment your needs to supply. Reach out and touch the Lord. I'm going to go ahead and obey God this morning. Brother David and Brother Brandon, will you just go right back there to Brother Bill and let's pray and lift him up right now. He needs a touching body. He needs a touching body. Father, I know that I...